Happy day for Habiba, Habibu Ali as federal government secures the release of his daughter Zaina from Hangman's News. Senate passes the 2019 appropriation bill of 8.9 trillion naira, 90 billion naira above the figure presented by President Muhammad Buhari. Nigeria and the United Kingdom sign pact on economic development and security. Good evening and thanks for joining us on the Networks News at 9. I am Muhammad Kudu Abubakar. Datunga Guemi joins me from Lagos, while Sadia Omar Digi is in Sapkoto. Zainab Aliyu, the Nigerian arrested for alleged involvement in drug trafficking by Saudi Arabian authorities, has been released. Her release follows the directive by President Muhammad Buhari to the Ministries of Foreign Affairs and Justice to intervene in the case. Permanent Secretary, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Mustafa Soleiman, confirmed her release and that of another Nigerian, Ibrahim Abubakar. Foreign Desk Correspondent Makut Salam Mucham now reports. Zainab Aliu, a Nigerian student of the Metamasule University in Kano, was reportedly arrested in Saudi Arabia for alleged possession of drugs. While the Saudi authorities set all judicial processes in motion, Zainab maintained her innocence while the family cried out to what they believe was a setup. Following investigation which led to the arrest of a syndicate which specializes in planting drugs in luggage of unsuspecting passengers, President Muhammad Buhari directed the Ministers of Justice and Foreign Affairs to intervene. This Tuesday was therefore a good day for Zainab and her family as the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Mustafa Suleiman, broke the news of her release. This Zainab has been released to our mission in Saudi, and uh, that is... Uh, a news that uh, I believe will be very, very heartwarming and uh, will be relieving also for both the family and the Nigerians that have had uh, to express their concern and their care, uh, you know, about these two Nigerians who found themselves in this situation, basically as a result of some uh, you know, uh, criminals who, whose activities, you know, have put these uh, two Nigerians into, you know, a very difficult situation. In Abuja, Makut Simon Machan, NT News. In the meantime, Nigerians have commended the federal government's proactiveness towards securing the release of Zainab Aliu, an undergraduate of the Maitama Sole University, Kano, on death row in Saudi Arabia for alleged drug trafficking offenses. Doni Dia puts Zainab's ordeal into perspective and reports on the reaction of Nigerians and her family after her release. <laughs> A journey of spiritual cleansing to the holy land of Saudi Arabia turned into a nightmare. Zainab Aliyu, who was on a holy pilgrimage to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, was arrested, imprisoned, and even put on a death roll after a bag loaded with tramadol was found at the airport with an inscription of Zainab Aliyu's details. My daughter said she hasn't got any luggage apart from the one they have seen in the hotel room. They said no. There is a bag in her name. Zainab's travail received global attention after a media report revealed that six airport officials were investigated and arrested for their role in the matter. The story today is taking a different dimension, this time on a positive note. It is the release of innocent Zainab Aliyu, facilitated by the federal government of Nigeria under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's very good news. We are happy to hear it. I'm very happy for her, congratulations for her, and thanks to, to the federal government, at least, for looking into the matter. She's a free person now. If I'm the family member, I'll be happy and I'll give thanks to the government for coming to my aid. With reports indicating that many innocent Nigerians have suffered similar fates, like Zainab Aliyu, there is a message from the public for a stiffer punishment for anyone involved in such deadly conspiracy. 1001 of such cases of 
conspiracy, especially that which has to do with drug peddling. And as a result, majority of such victims never come out of such accusation alive. We have other airports that go to Saudi from Lagos, from sometimes from Port Harcourt, if they are pilgrimage, and from Kanu, Sokoto. They should try and fish out so many of these. And with all agreement finalized with the government of Saudi Arabia, Zainab Aliyu is expected back into the country any moment from now. God said, you have to be tried as a human, as a Muslim and as a believer of true injection. We believe that we will go through and Allah will see us through and Allah has seen us through. In Abuja, doing Dia NT News. The release of Zainab Ali by the Saudi Arabian authorities has received public accolades. Fatima Sanusik RIA reports that prior to this development, students of the Yusuf Maitama Suleh University, Kanu, organized a peaceful procession to demand the release of their colleague. Zainab Habib Aliyu has gained her freedom with her release by the Saudi Arabian government following top diplomatic talks between Nigeria and Saudi Arabia to prove the innocence of the 25-year-old victim. Before this development, concerned citizens under the auspices of student unions of different universities and civil society groups stage a peaceful rally in solidarity with Zainab. We are calling on government officials to look into the matter and to punish the culprits appropriately. And Zainab should gain justice. The essence of this protest is just like maybe in the solidarity of one of us, which is Zainab. Expectations are high as family, friends and well wishes are looking forward for the arrival of Zainab and two others into the country. In Kano Fatima Senusi Garay, NTA News. From our Lagos Network studio to discuss the alleged planting of hard drugs at the Kano International Airport is Mr. Olumeku Olumuyiwa, Executive Director Corporate of the Nigeria Aviation Company, NACOM. Welcome, Mr. Olumuyiwa. Having me, sir. Well, we understand your staff is reported to be one of those arrested in connection with this case. What can you tell us? Thank you once again. We wish to express our sincere thanks and gratitude to our president, who um, ensured that um, the innocent lady, Zainab, was eventually released. We equally would like to use this medium to rejoice to the families of um, Zainab and um, we thank uh, them for their patience and um, we hope in future things like this will never occur in our country again. Precisely to the issue of um, one of our staff who was involved, we have as a policy zero tolerance to this kind of actions and any breach of such, we ensure that we collaborate with all security officials designated to actually ensure and provide security around the airports where we serve. What, what specific actions has the Nigeria Aviation Handling Company taken with respect to this kind of uh, situation and even the persons involved? Well, the person involved in this case, along with the other five people, have been charged caught by the NDLA and uh, we hope that justice will prevail at the end of the day. As for us as an institution, like I said, we have zero tolerance to such behavior and we constantly engage with security agencies to ensure that profiling of customers is carried out before this is done. And we will enjoin all security agencies as well to join hands with us to ensure that things like this never occur. We as an institution, I publicly quoted one for that matter, transparent and open to review and sanctions if infractions are committed. We commit our organization to whatever prescriptions that the, civil, the regulatory agencies give us. And we hope that uh, in future, nothing of this nature will ever happen. Once again, we would like to thank our president and the presidency for ensuring the release of Ms. Zainab. What further efforts or measures is the Nigerian Aviation Handling Company taken or will be taken 
to boost passengers' confidence. In conjunction with the regulatory agencies, FAN, NCAA, I, that we will ensure that cameras and the profiling of our staff will be properly carried out. Providing uh, things, equipment relating to CCTV surveillance cameras and scanning machines should, act, should be provided for at these airports. And any attempt to do proxy checking would no longer be tolerated. So any breach of such infractions will, or any breach of such uh, prescribed uh, processes would actually be met with the full wrath of the law. Mr. Olumeku Olumuyiwa, Executive Director, Corporate of the Nigeria Aviation Handling Company, thank you for your time. For having me once again. In another news, Dr. Mohamed Mahmoud Abubakar, the chairman of the Universal Basic Education Commission in Ubeck, and his daughter, Yasmin Mohamed, who were kidnapped yesterday along Kaduna Abuja Expressway, have been released. A statement by the Force Public Relations Officer of the Nigeria Police Force, DCP Frank Mba, announced that one male suspect was arrested in connection with the crime, while an AK-47 rifle was recovered. The statement also adds that investigation is still ongoing on the incident. Northern Traditional Rulers Council and a high-powered federal government delegation have met in Kaduna to explore sustainable solutions to the growing security challenges bedeviling the northern part of the country. Majama Adamu has the report. Participants of this joint meeting comprising members of the Northern Traditional Rulers Council led by the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr III, and a delegation of the federal government led by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, commenced the meeting with full knowledge of the abduction of the Chairman Universal Basic Education Commission alongside his daughter, Edi Elia. It came few days after the police have declared the Kaduna Abuja Road safe. A breakdown of crime statistics by the Acting Inspector General of Police, Muhammad Adamu, who addressed the meeting, shows that 685 persons were kidnapped across the country between January and April 2019. Over 79% of these abductions were recorded in the north, with 365 persons abducted in the northwest sub-region alone. This same pattern of statistics applies to other forms of crimes like armed robbery, banditry, and crime-related deaths. These pathetic scenarios, according to the Chairman Northern Traditional Rulers Council, Sultan Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr III, are abnormal and cannot be addressed through normal solutions. But this is not normal because we have not been used to this in past decades. Now things have gone terribly bad, and we must sit together and find solutions to these problems. The royal father is worried that many times government fails to accord their inputs on critical national issues the importance they deserve. A fear allayed by the secretary to the government of the federation who declared the conference open. So it is very critical at this stage that we review issues and begin to address them collectively as a region and as a people. It's a, it's a serious partnership that we've started with the traditional institutions. While the minister of defense, Mansour Ang Ali, reassured the royal fathers of the commitment of the Buhari administration to the sanctity of lives and property of the citizenry, the Acting Inspector General of Police speaks on community policing model, a workable, sustainable, and broad-based alternative for effective security for all. Mr. President, readiness and continuous effort finding solution to the security challenges must be appreciated. He has provided a enabling environment for the armed forces to operate and inspire our forces to attain success in fight against terrorism, and insecurity across the country. The reality remains community policing remains a potent crime control model. However, to give a sustainable effect to the model in Nigeria, they need to integrate it into policing functions at institutional and national level remains imperative. Governor Nasu Erufai, whose state is witnessing recurring incidents of breach of the peace, is particularly elated by the concern and commitment of the traditional institution welcoming the proposed partnership as a proactive major in Kaduna, Majama Adamu, NTA News. Leadership by example for effective national security is the focus of a lecture delivered by the Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Olonishaki, aimed at developing strategic thinking in course 27 officers at the National Defense College, Abuja. Correspondent Naja Atutejani reports. Combat
readiness and effectiveness are watchwords, the armed forces have now evolved to accommodate a broader perspective of national security. Officers of Course 27 who are approaching one-star general status with various commands under their charge are being equipped to handle top-level decisions which can have far-reaching consequences on national security. General Abayomi Oloni Shakin, the Chief of Defense Staff, is well acquainted with the consequences of making the wrong decisions in the war front. With more than 20 years of military leadership under his belt, the four-star general says strategic level thinking is necessary in today's evolving conflict. This lecture is well-timed and apt and should agitate your minds and equip you toward evolving new leadership concepts that will facilitate the tackling of the various national security challenges. Continuous learning advice there for a well-trained armed forces equipped with all the pertinent tactical resources to command operations and other strategic duties which are also expected of the course 27 officers. Najaa Tutijani, NTA News. A meeting between the Nigeria's Vice President, the Emir Shibajo, and the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary, Department for International Development, Jeremy Hunt, is providing an opportunity to take stock of Nigeria's priorities in improving the business environment and security, with particular focus on the Northeast geopolitical zone. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports that a new pact on economic development was entered into by both countries at the meeting. It's a long relationship just receiving new momentum at this first meeting of the Economic Development Forum of Nigeria and the United Kingdom. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo standing on behalf of the country, while Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment Okechuku Enenama and UK's Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt signed the bilateral agreement. So we think we can do a lot more together to ensure that we foster the right environment to grow the level of bilateral trade and investment between our countries. As a government, we are not unmindful of the challenges that have hindered uh, business and investment, uh, the business and investment environment. We have taken these challenges as opportunities and have made the extensive build out of modern infrastructure, both hard and soft, as the main thrust of our administration's plans uh, going forward, especially. Uh, in the last two years and going forward in the next term of this administration. Many meetings, mostly on how to increase trade and investment and economic relations, had been held before the signing to put Nigeria in the right position. And there is undeniable evidence that we are repositioning uh, the Nigerian economy for truth, growth and shared prosperity. We've seen increased investor interest in Nigeria by the investment announcements that we track regularly. Uh, we want to support the efforts the Nigerian government is making under President Buhari to stabilize the situation in the Northeast uh, and we have put our expertise at the President's disposal. As you are aware, UK is going through its own changes and we believe that like, we probably need each other as much as ever. You know, so we look forward to a very productive uh, bilateral relationship with the UK going forward. The nation looks forward to active participation at the African Investment Summit in London early next year. In the State House, Jude Onifade, NJ News. Senate passes the 2019 Appropriation Bill. Details when we return. You know, from day one, God makes life easier. They brought us past second billing unbelievable data packages. And even an optic fiber cable to make sure we optimize. There are two things in our lives we depend on the communication and information, voice and data. Whether you sell, buy, learn, teach, serve, or lead, it really comes out to those two things, voice and data. Today's world is all about you. You want what you want, how you want it, and glow delivers. The freedom to use voice and data the way you like on every recharge. Easy. Glow. Yakata. The heavyweight voice and data plan.
Recharge from 100 Naira and get a minimum 500 Naira to call all networks, plus up to 6 gigabytes of data to browse, chit-chat, WhatsApp and more. Dial star 230 hash or buy your glow sim. Glow Unlimited. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, invites all Federal Permanent Secretaries, Heads of Cabinet Affairs Offices at the state level, some select Secretaries to state governments, and Heads of Service to states, to the maiden meeting of Heads of Cabinet Affairs at the federal and state levels aimed at building a synergy for efficient coordination of approved council decisions on policies, programs, and projects towards effective growth and development of the country. Date, Thursday, May 2nd, 2019. Time, 9 a.m. Venue, State House Banquet Hall, Presidential Villa, Abuja. Registration starts at 7 a.m. at the same venue. Babatunde Lawal, Permanent Secretary, Cabinet Affairs Office, announcer. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Now what if this way go back? Now important sugar, why one cent now? Government, don't bring the Nigerian Sugar Master Plan, NSMP, we go increase sugar production for we country. You never hear say, federal government, don't ban the importation of sugar. We're there for packets in we country. These boys, where they drop trousers, work out for town, go get work to do. Now him be say, poverty go reduce. Pounds, dollars, naira, go berekete. Lights go den nyafu nyafu. From the sugar cane back, where you the chop through way. Sugar cane farmers self, go enjoy them, go train their children, go better school. Make we support government for the Nigerian Sugar Master Plan. No sell, no buy, reject finished sugar products when they smuggle enter we country. Make we join us together with government to make Nigeria better. Na National Sugar Development Council, NSDC, the Nakuna Dispuri. The Center for Basic Space Science, an activity center of excellence under the National Space Research and Development Agency, NASDAQ, invites the general public to the official commissioning of projects at the center's campus, Unsuka, in Enugu State. The projects, which were fully funded by the federal government under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari, are as follows. Astronomy Observatory Complex, Mechanical Workshop, Lunt Solar Telescope, Optical Astronomy Dome, 3D Printing Laboratory, date 4th May 2019, time 10 a.m. Special Guest of Honor, Dr. Ogunaya Onu, Guest of Honor, Right Honorable Ifai Ugwani, Senator Ike Ekwaremadu, Senator Ajayi Borofis, Honorable Benny La, Chief Host, Professor Seidu Mohammed, Host, Dr. Bonaventure Okere, Dr. Felix Ali, announce. <laughs> Oluwase <laughs> I mean, I want to I'm not a physics speaker. Oh, no, I'm Get five times your recharge value to call all networks without restrictions. Recharge and dial star 234 hash to enjoy this offer. Available to new and existing customers. You want to go to the next one? I'm not a Airtel, the smartphone network. 
organized labor in Nigeria cordially invites all workers and the general public to the 2019 May Day celebration with the theme, Another 100 Years of Struggle for Jobs, Dignity and Social Justice in Nigeria. Venue, Eagle Square, Abuja. Time, 8 a.m. Come one, come all. Announcer, Dr. Peter Ozo Esong, General Secretary, NLC. Musa Lawal Ozidi, MNI, Secretary General, TUC. On behalf of the management and staff of the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment, as well as its parastatals, I wish to send warm felicitations to Nigerian workers on the occasion of the 2019 Workers' Day. Theme of this year's celebration, another 100 years of struggle for jobs, dignity, and social justice in Nigeria. The celebration also coincides with the centenary celebration of the International Labor Organization, which Nigeria proudly pioneered as the first country office in Africa. While I sincerely salute the resilience of the nation's workforce, and its numerous contributions to national development, we owe plenty accolades to the most labor-friendly president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. As we move to the next level, I have no doubt that things will get better. I wish you all a productive and fulfilling Workers' Day celebration. Long live Nigerian workers. Long live the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Senator Dr. Chris Mwabweze Ngige, Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment, Thank you for remaining with the NTA. Senate has passed the 2019 appropriation bill of 8.9 trillion naira, 90 billion naira higher than the figure submitted by President Muhammad Buhari. Senators retained the oil benchmark of $60 per barrel at an exchange rate of 305 naira per dollar. 502 billion naira is for statutory transfers. 2.2 trillion naira for debt services and 4.5 trillion naira for recurrent expenditure, while 2.9 trillion naira is for capital expenditure. Ignatius Sunko has the report. In December 2018, President Muhammad Buhari presented the 2019 appropriation bill before the joint session of the National Assembly. Four months after, the Senate Committee on Appropriation concludes scrutiny of the money bill and Chairman of the Committee, Danjuma Goje, laid it at plenary on Wednesday, 17th of April, 2019. Thirteen days after it was laid, the Senate has passed it with an increase of 90 billion naira higher than what the President submitted. And there was explanation for the increment. This is as a result of the provision for the severance benefits of the out outgoing legislators and legislative aides, the induction and orientation, as well as inauguration of new legislators, all of which occur only once in four years, but were in the undivertedly not captured in 2019 budget proposal. There was also the need to provide more funds for the security and intelligence agencies. Northeast Intervention Fund. What exactly does that mean? Is it meant for the Northeast Development Commission or is it going to another organization? The Russian fund is meant to be utilized by the Northeast, newly established Northeast Development Commission. 502 billion is for statutory transfers, recurrent expenditure 4.05 trillion, capital expenditure 2.09 trillion. The National Assembly returned the 500 billion allocation to the Special Intervention Fund as submitted by the President. Federal Minister of Power, Works and Housing has the highest sectoral allocation of 394.9 billion. Federal Minister of Transportation, 179.3. Minister of Defense, 156.1. While Federal Minister of Agriculture has 107.2 billion naira allocation. The 10 billion naira recently approved by the National Assembly for victims of Zamfara crisis was included in the budget. And thank the committee to our appropriation and hope that with this budget passed that um, the executive will also ensure for a full implementation of the budget for the benefit of, of Nigerians uh, uh, as a whole. Senate has adjourned to Tuesday 7th of May 2019 from the National Assembly Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Still on the National Assembly, the House of Representatives this Tuesday similarly considered and adopted report of the Committee on Appropriations on a bill for an act to authorize the issue from the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the Federation, the sum of 8.916 trillion naira. 
for the 2019 fiscal year ending 31st December 2019. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nanim reports. In a committee of supply, the House considered the Appropriations Committee report on the 2019 budget. Breakdown of the budget indicates that 502.058 billion naira is for statutory transfers and 2.254 trillion naira is for debt servicing. While 4.055 trillion naira is earmarked for recurrent expenditure, 2.094 trillion naira is allocated to capital expenditure. Included in the budget also is the sum of 10 billion naira special intervention fund meant for rehabilitation of Zamfara State in the aftermath of bandits' attack. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, Zavit. The House also passed seven bills, including that to establish Defense Research Development Bureau and adopted two motions of urgent public importance, including need for investigation on the death of 11 brigade boys and others who were injured during Easter procession in Gombe State, brought before it by Representative Aisha Duku. We as representatives of the people should live up to our expectations to make sure that our security agents are the right people to handle the weapons that are given to them, you know, to man the, the, the country. In as much as I condemn the action of the civil defense officer, we should urge Nigerians not to take the law into their hands. The civil defense officer was also killed in a mob action. To investigate the alleged disappearance of a core member, Mr. Value Akiwe, serving in Plato State, the Committee on Youth Development was given two weeks to report back to plenary as moved by Representative Sajus Ogun. I want us all to stand up and urge the security agencies, all the NYC, to do something, we must know the whereabouts of that young man. The House also received an executive communication from President Muhammad Buhari on the reasons for declining assent to the National Transport Commission Bill 2018. Plenary was adjourned till Thursday, 2nd May 2019. From the National Assembly, Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has advocated for more support and encouragement from the charitable and other philanthropic organizations to extend their gestures towards the promotion of the education of visually impaired persons in order to upgrade their status and to, for them to contribute meaningfully to the development of the society. Mrs. Buhari stated this in, during the presentation in Abuja of the copies of digital Braille Quran to the students of some selected schools of the blind from across the country, courtesy of the Qatar Charity Foundation. State House correspondent Aliyu Kaber reports that Mrs. Buhari also signed a memorandum of understanding with the Qatar Charity Foundation on behalf of the Future Assured Program. This is the cross section of the visually impaired students from the selected schools of the blind across the country. They are here under the auspices of the Aisha Muhammad Buhari Foundation in conjunction with the Qatar Charity Organization. They are presented each with a copy of a digital Braille Quran to facilitate their learning, especially to boost their Islamic knowledge in reciting the Holy Quran in Braille in line with the digital world in order to become useful to themselves and the society at large. At the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding to facilitate this, Mrs. Buhari enjoined well-meaning individuals to always endeavor to support the weaker people for them to have a sense of belonging for a prosperous nation. I wish to therefore commend the Qatar Charity for bringing this important innovation to our children those that are visually impaired, and our schools. I want to encourage other charities and philanthropic organizations to do more in this area of promoting and distributing digitalized knowledge resources, especially other important religious literature, so that there is no limit to the knowledge accessible to students. Just we need prayer. We need a uh, prayer from you to continue and our plan in our plan in head office in Doha 
We reached 2,000 often. The Director General of National Orientation Agency, Dr. Garba Abare, and his counterpart of the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, Dr. Isa Ali Pantami and other speakers applauded the initiative and promised to support all efforts towards promoting the development of the country and national integration. I am Ali Kabir, NTA News. The Northern Governors Wives Forum remains focused and steadfast in the campaign against drug abuse to enhance socio-economic and security issues in the northern part of the country. They stated this in a communique issued at the end of the forum's quarterly meeting in Abuja. Fatima Aliu has details. The first ever nationwide survey on drug abuse in Nigeria revealed that the nation is in pangs of a major public health emergency with drug and substance abuse, particularly by those within the ages of 15 and 64, with northern Nigeria reportedly to be the worst hit. More worrying is the fact that about 3 million of these are drug dependent but cannot access help due to lack of health facilities. To arrest this ugly trend and to save a whole generation of youths and women under the threat of destruction, the Northern Governors Wives Forum have been making concerted efforts to mitigate the negative consequences of the raising menace. We've been very successful in the sense that a lot of the states, because of the effort of the Northern Governors Wise Forum now, we have created state steering drug committees. Some we have cascaded to the local government levels. We have done a lot of training. We have uh, contributed in some states to open uh, drop-in centers. We have contributed to renovate drug rehabilitation centers. So a lot has been done. It was also an emotional moment for members of the forum to some, it was time to say goodbye as tenor of their husbands ends on May 29. Uh, it has been of sisterhood. Uh, we have come together with a common goal, and that is to support our husbands. Even out of office, the women want to continue advocacy for sustainable war against drug abuse and the establishment of rehabilitation centers. In Abuja, Fatima Ali, NTA News. The Sudanese Embassy in Abuja has announced the postponement of the World Conference on Gamma Arabic, earlier scheduled to hold in Khartoum between the 1st and 3rd of May 2019. A statement from the Embassy to the Minister for Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, indicates that the postponement is due to the current political situation in the Sudan. Regretting any inconvenience caused by the shift in dates, the Sudanese Embassy said the conference will now hold in October. 2019. Good leadership has been identified as an effective tool that can move any organization forward. This could be achieved through conflict-free employee-employer interface. This was the position of Onoja Isaac at a seminar organized by the Radio, Television, Theater and Art Workers Union, Ratau, ahead of the 2019 Workers' Day celebration. Linda Ogidi has the report. The Radio, Television, Theatre and Art Workers put together the seminar to appreciate and encourage workers. Having been equipped with leadership uh, qualities and knowledge, then it will be easier for us to be able to lead in our indiv individual homes. It will be easier for us to lead in our organization and it will be easier for us to lead in our society. You lead people, you manage things. So if you want uh, things to, you want your organization to move forward, you must look at people. The workers express satisfaction and acknowledge the role Ratao is playing and urge them to do more. The, the facilitator spoke about leadership. And in the course of speaking, he said a lot about leadership. But one thing that he drummed, which I remember, is that it's something that has to start with self. Right within me. I know I'm no longer the same. Management staff of the Nigerian Television Authority were in attendance. They admonished and commended the staff on their commitment and sacrifice. They wish Nigerian workers a successful May Day celebration. In Abuja, Linda Ogidi, NTA News. The Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, NIPR has inducted 170 new members with a charge to make integrity, professionalism, and excellence paramount. Joy Uzo has the report. But also always, but also always. 
Maintain my status. Public relations is a strategic communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationship between organizations and the public. These inductees are drawn from different public and private organizations within the country, comprising fresh applicants and others who have been practicing public relations without appropriate professional certification. I believe you know that the practice of public relations by whatever name is a criminal offense in the Nigerian statutes without uh, certification by this institute. Our charge first to the new members is to adhere by the professional code. For the inductees, it was a dream come true and an opportunity to make better impact in the discharge of their duties. And integrity is the, is the bedrock of everything. Protect your name, protect the institution, and protect Nigeria as well. I believe that public relations officers should come in and identify issues before they become crises. And it is an honor to belong to such an institute, you know, Nigeria Institute of Public Relations. And I believe that this is a stepping stone also. With other degrees and this particular certificate, it's going to help us to grow. The Nigeria Institute of Public Relations is a professional body of all qualified public relations practitioners in the country established in 1963 it is the largest professional body for public relations in africa in abuja i'm joy uzo nta news for more on nta network news let's join dotu in lagos thank you kuru and welcome to lagos the Central Bank of Nigeria has unveiled the Clean Note Policy and Bank Note Fitness Guidelines to serve as a mechanism in identifying bank notes fit for circulation. Deputy Governor of Operations, CBN, for La Shodum Shonobi, says the policy document will assist in the withdrawal of mutilated notes from circulation. Abolade Salami reports. The Central Bank of Nigeria report states the demand for cash has continued to grow despite the introduction of various forms of electronic payment systems. The volume of currency in circulation as at the end of 2012 rose significantly by 10.34% to 7,914 billion pieces as at mid-year of 2018, with a large proportion of the notes identified as unfit, dirty, or mutilated. So what ensuring the circulation of quality bank notes, the Apex Bank, in compliance with Section 2 of CBN's Act 2007, made available adequate supply of clean and quality bank notes to meet public demand. We also feel it will affect commerce because people would be more inclined to spend when they have new notes in their hands and merchants more willing to accept rather than the bickering over is the note fit or not, and therefore a commercial transaction does not go through. So we believe it will definitely help the economy. The Apex Bank, however, noted that the responsibility of clean note is not exclusively that of CBN, but rather a collaborative effort between the CBN, bank note supply, and deposit money banks. We should handle it with care, and all stakeholders involved in seeing and ensuring that we have clean notes in circulation. They were all here today, and as long as we continue to collaborate, we know that we'll have clear notes in circulation for the Nigerian public. The policy, which is intended to be used by the public and cash handlers, is aimed at protecting the integrity of the narrow notes. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. The Pakistan Chief of Naval Staff has visited Nigerian Navy facilities and units in Lagos with the promise that Pakistan will assist the country to stem the tide of insecurity in the Gulf of Guinea. Michael Olale reports. In 2018, Nigeria experienced an increase in piracy attack with 41 cases recorded within its territorial waters out of the 54 attacks that occurred in the Gulf of Guinea, according to the International Maritime Bureau. This development not only threatens the quest to get rid of criminality in the maritime domain, but endangers global initiative of entrenching peace. <laughs> The 
his visit to the naval formations in Lagos. But the Pakistan chief of naval staff, Zafar Mahmoud Abbasi, is to assess operational units and discuss combative strategies required to restore sanity in the country's territorial waters. Zafar Abbasi at the Kora Command had a closed-door interaction with officers and men, basically on means of deepening military collaboration. While at the Western Naval Command, inspected one of the Nigerian Navy flagship, the NNS Unguru. His visit reaffirms the over 50 years bilateral relationship between Nigeria and Pakistan, which has allowed both countries to exchange ideas on capacity building. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. This is NTA Network News. More reports after this commercial break. Please stay tuned. The management of the Nigeria Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria cordially invites the general public to the 14th edition of the annual Ramadan lecture, which will, inshallah, hold on Saturday, 18th May 2019. The topic is tolerance in Islam to be delivered by Sheikh Mohammed Nuruddin Lemu, Director of Research and Training, the Awa Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust, Mina Niger State. The venue for the event is Lumana Multipurpose Hall, River Road, Jabi Road East, Gwarimi. Jerry Kaduna by 9 a.m. Under the distinguished chairmanship of Lamido Adamawa, His Royal Highness Muhammad Berkindo Aliyu Mustafa, the Chief Host is His Excellency Malam Nasr Ahmed Er Rufai, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State. Royal Father of the Day is His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Show Idris, CFA, MF Zezo. The host are Malin Yakubin Muhammad, Director General of Nigeria Television Authority, Malam Mansur Liman, Director General of Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, and Dr. Ostao Kichiku, Director General of Voice of Nigeria, announced our organizing committee. You are welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the daring and invincible Louis the Mosquito. Responsible for 200 malaria cases all on its own. Is there anything that can kill Louis? Martin! Presenting Morty's Soul God. Its powerful formula kills malaria mosquitoes fast. So, get Morty's Power Guard. Activate your life. An active life with the power of vegetables and fruits. Chivita Active. Be active. Do more. When I was a little girl, I loved spending time with mum and grandma cleaning the house. I was so excited to sing in the choir. And your shirts are always so white. I knew what mum's secret was. Today, I'm a modern woman that still trusts the secrets passed down to me. It's Jig, of course. The original trusted bleach, which can be used all around your house for amazing results. Shh, it's our little secret. It's no secret. It's Jick's best ever extra whitening power. Just Jick it. What's up? His friends didn't come. Hey, let's practice. But you're going out. Don't worry about me. Nothing satisfies a mother more than seeing a child grow up. But I know as he sweats, he'll face the risk of germs, which can cause skin irritation. That's why you need the new Best Ever Dental Cool. Its new advanced formulation with extra menthol protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs and gives your family icy cool freshness. Growing up needs dental protection. Sell imported materials. Oh, here. As beautiful as the shop is. Can't see. Hmm? Buying foreign goods does not help our economy, neither does it boost local production. And the good thing is, Nigerian made products are high quality. Really? And to make Nigeria great again. That is why I only sell made in Nigeria products. Because change begins with me. Convinced. Change begins with me too. <laughs> Change begins with me. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture.
You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News. Instagram at NTA Network. Twitter at NTA News Now. YouTube at NTA News Online. Or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad. Or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Thank you for remaining with the NTA. The federal government's investment drive in oil and gas sector, which creates an excellent climate condition for investors to establish private refineries, has been described as genuine approach in tackling decay in the oil and gas sector and also help in removing impediments to the growth of the sector. Key players in the oil and gas sector rose from their meeting in Kano with a resolve to put their weight behind President Muhammad Buhari and his ongoing efforts to break the monopoly in the sector. Mansoor Ali Hassan reports. Participants were delighted with the recent signing of Memorandum of Understanding between Nigeria and Saudi Arabian Oil Company for the establishment of private refinery in the country. They pledged continued support and loyalty to the Buhari administration as it affects oil and gas sector. Uh, in the next six months or one year, we will see the difference by the grace of God. The Ipman president, Sanusi Abdufari, noted with satisfaction federal government's commitment in ensuring adequate fuel supply in the country and pledged to key in by ensuring sustained supply of the commodity. And is doing it for the, for the, for the cause of the people to be happy. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, we are also for the people. He also thanked the president for ascending 30,000 Naira national minimum wage bill into law and called on the Nigerian workers to reciprocate the gesture. Other speakers show encomiums on President Muhammadu Buhari for his entire efforts in repositioning the country. In Kano, Mansour Ali Hassan, NTA News. Correspondent on special assignment examined street hawking by children. Sadia Umar Degi in Sakoto is our guide. Good evening and welcome to Sakoto. The less privileged and vulnerable groups of Modarao village in Sakoto state were among the beneficiaries of a free medical outreach by the Nigerian Air Force in some selected states in the country. Lata Abdullahi has the report. The free medical outreach is part of activities lined up to celebrate the 55th anniversary of the Nigerian Air Force. About 3,000 beneficiaries were diagnosed with different ailments and given free drugs, eyeglasses for those with visual defects, and treated mosquito nets for pregnant and nursing mothers. The beneficiaries were urged to make effective use of the facilities provided. We felt by selecting this community, it will foster our relationship with the community and the eventual establishment of our base around this community. The beneficiaries expressed gratitude to the Nigerian Air Force for the gesture. Representatives of the magazine of Madurawa and the district head of Bagarawa expressed gratitude to the Nigerian Air Force for the free medical opportunity. In Sakoto, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. That's all we can take from this end. It's now back to Muhammad in Abuja. Still ahead, an update on the Super Falcons tournament in China. Stay with us. <music> The Ninth National Assembly and the intricacy.